Hey friends, it is round three, P3, day 11. I did not vlog yesterday. I had a goose egg yesterday. It was a, a red wine goose egg. Um, had a tough, tough day the day before and had some issues I was dealing with and I attempted to drown my sorrows in a glass of red wine, which wasn't a very good glass of red wine and so that's all I ended up having so I think that's why I just had a goose instead of of a gain um, still trying to get off my post Thanksgiving weight um, I am down today 1.4 and so I am still above LDW 4.4 pounds um, after realistically only four days of being back on P3, after 10 days of eating poorly, um, I'd say that's pretty darn good. So I kind of wanted to talk about that. And, you know, many HCGers choose to stop vlogging in P3. They skip vlogging. And, um... I, I think I've kind of reviewed this before in in a past vlog. Um, many many of us feel like we have nothing new to say. There's no you know fabulous results to report in every day, and I think what this does is it reduces expectation for new new HCG followers, and um, y you know what it does is it. All of a sudden, people have fear because they don't know what to expect because there's not a lot of people that, that do the P3 vlogging. So, you know, in reviewing in P2, there's rules to follow. It's really strict and you do it right or you do it wrong. You're either up or you're down. And your body decides when it's going to release. And, it, you know, it depends on your ability to stay on protocol and how much sleep you get and what your intake of fluids is and, and what your stress level is and uh, if you have any pre-existing medical conditions. And so, you know, for the most part, P2 is pretty simple. It is what it is. You know, it's uh, the, the, you have the head games with the ritual of stepping on the scale every day. Um, and, and that would actually be the time to get rid of the scale. When all of us are talking about not stepping on the scale in P2, I mean, if you're doing what you need to be doing, you're going to you're gonna drop, what, release weight eventually. And uh, if it's if the time is right, that's, that's what happens. So, and here, you know, some people might not agree with this, but here is my opinion on, on P3. Uh, failure in the HCG protocol takes place in phase three, period. I mean, we, we have to learn to eat again. We have to learn how the, the strict rules are all gone. And now you just have these parameters of what you need to follow. You have, um, the, the you know, there's guidelines and, and, you know, I, I'm a scale junkie, and I that to me P3. You need to get on the scale every single day, once a day in the morning. Um, NOS, as SoCal Plum says, um, that means naked on the scale. And um, you know, you need to take a, a a look and review. You have some serious, drastic fluctuations that take place in P3, and and what that that happens because hunger is back. And hunger equals making choices. Hunger equals learning about yourself again as um, someone that's going to exist in this world and, and go about eating in, in the real world and facing that hunger and, and learning about why you make the choices that you make and... and um, you know, in, in phase two, the hunger is gone because of the HCG. And so it, uh, you know, you're, you're learning in a different way there. 
uh, you're, you're learning about portion control and what it feels like to not be hungry and, and make decisions in, um, you know, P3, you have to make those decisions. And then you have to take a look at what happens when you eat certain things. And every one of us is different. We all, some of us can't eat cheese. Some of us have trouble with nuts. Some of us find out we have severe allergies to things that we never even realized until we eliminated them completely by doing P2. And then we added them back in at P3 and we're, it's just like, oh, I feel like, I feel horrible. And, or wow, I just gained five pounds. How do you gain five pounds overnight? Something, that's an indication something's not right. Go back and look. Um, and so with each P3 that you do, you, you have to learn that you have to go slow and you have to add things in slowly and it's tough. And um, with each round that I've done, I've, I'm learning that if you don't do this, then how are you ever to know what it is that changed your weight, that made that drastic fluctuation take place? And so, um, you know, if we keep cycling and skipping phase three, how are we going to learn as individuals what what works for each of us? How, how you know, I, I did, um, let's see. You know, in my previous rounds, I did do P3 the first time around, and I jumped in, and, you know, I started real slow the first few days, and then all of a sudden, I think I went on a vacation, and I ate a ton of stuff that, you know, I shouldn't have eaten maybe once a day. The rest of the day, I did well, um, and I came home to like a 9.7 gain, and it took me a week and a half, and then it all went, it all, I lost all of it. And so that was really interesting to see that, you know, your body, if you do go back to eating correctly, tries to self-correct. And then the next time around, <laughs> you know, I was in a hurry. I jumped, I, I probably did three weeks of P3 and then one week of P4, which was really more P3, and then got back on the juice. And, um... You know, I didn't do very well in that round, and I, I, th I thought I was invincible, and I've said this before, I was cocky, and, you know, I can get it off. I'll, even if I go up, I can still get it off, and um, that I didn't learn anything there. Obviously, that showed me. I, I made some serious mistakes there, and then I did phase three again, and I, you know, I did okay, and I maintained, and then I started thinking about getting back on the juice, and... I started eating in a way that led me to um, gaining weight in the first place because mentally I was thinking, oh, you know, I'm going to get back on the juice and I'll just carve, carve this all off. And so this was very much a learning round for me and still is in that I'm seeing a lot of growth internally in how I'm looking at food and yes I still stumble and yes I'm still making mistakes and that's how we learn we make mistakes and then you either choose to freak out about it or you really take a good look at it and think okay why why did I do that how can I not do that again I always say a mistake is acceptable as long as you don't continue to make it um, and I don't want to continue to do HCG and have that mentality in my head for the rest of my life. Oh, I'll just get back on the juice. <laughs> I mean, that's not what, that's not what it's for. That's not, and I know there's some of us out there do that. And I can't say what's going to happen 10 years from now if I have a hiccup in my life. And I know that this tool is available, but I will say for right now, I don't want to continue doing round after round. I'm so close to almost being done. So in my head, I have this gain from Thanksgiving. I want it off. Um, and I feel like I'm at that pivotal point where it would be real easy to just let myself go when I have these stressful days. And then there's the other days where I have to remember, no, get it back off, maintain it for a few weeks so that you can get back on the juice and you can do this correctly. There is a reason for phase three. We have to do it right. Um, so that's where I'm at today. Down 1.4. 
I'm doing okay, and I'll get back on tomorrow and let you guys know how things go as I continue to struggle through this <laughs> phase three. All right, take care, ciao.